once again As your fragrance fills this place Hey God As your fragrance fills can see as your fragrance feels the room we are with for more of you God you are the essence of life Bye.
a journey of seven steps. We're going to ascend seven steps in five portions. Five is the number of grace. Seven is the number of perfection. There will be grace and perfection here tonight. Oh Lord, I worship you. We're going to empty our hearts, empty our assets, invoke the power of God, make a declaration to God, and then we're going to glorify his name. I'm a strategy consultant. We're going to do strategic worship tonight. I'm just going to read a few instructions and then we follow those instructions and I trust you to convert those instructions into words. I can assure you that Tony is in the spirit because it's as if she is using certain words that God gave me. I prepared before I came here. The first thing that you need to know is that in Revelations, the first law, the first law of worship is that the Bible says that God is looking for true worshipers, those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. The spirit is not the problem, it's the truth that is the problem. And therefore, I want you to come to God tonight with integrity of heart, with non-pretentiousness, naked, completely before God. When I go and give thoughts, when I come back, I lie prostrate before God and I give him all the glory because he owns the intelligence, he owns the power, he owns the glory, he owns the capital, he owns everything, he owns us. He bought us with the blood of Jesus. Blood is spiritual currency. So tonight, no posing, no awareness of the next person. We're just going to worship God. Highest chorus, 
and do and they and do and they and they and they and they oh what's better I may come a day or so tall in my Highest currency. Let's travel. That I may worship, worship him. Worship him. You don't need a reason. You don't need a song that moves you. Hey, hey, uh. Worship him because he is God. Oh, the highest currency was paid for this. Was paid.
There's somebody here tonight who wants the love of God. You, you don't feel loved by your husband, by your family, by your brothers, and you need love. God is telling you tonight that he has his arms around you. You're a woman, female, and God has his arms around you. Receive that, please. It's not what you think. You're not thinking what you are thinking. You don't think you're unworthy. They think you are beautiful and lovely and loving. Change your perspective. See differently. I want all of us to get into worship. If you are anywhere else in your soul, exit and enter into worship. Bow before your king in every way inside of your heart so that you can partake of what is on this table tonight. We will not stand as outsiders. We will not be looking in from the outside. Come in. Come in. Just ask God for help. Father, Lord Almighty, take all of my attention. Take all of my heart. I worship you now. I lay all that I am before you now. I come in fully. 
with everything that I am, with every question, with every answer, with every knowledge, with every truth. Worthy are you. In Revelations 4, 11, we are told that the 20 and the 4 elders cast down their crowns. These are political figures, or else they will not have no crowns. They cast down their crowns, their endowments, their power, their political aspirations, everything was cast before God. This evening, I want you to cast down your crown. And we all have different crowns. For some, it is power. For some, it is privilege. For some, it is status. For some, it is beauty. For some, it is aspiration. For some, it is wealth. For some, it is pedigree. Whatever the crown that you have on your head, I want you to cast it before sovereignty, willingly, by yourself, unto God. Alone, he alone is worthy. He is the King of kings, the Lord of lords. Whatever kingdom you have, whatever your aspirations are, however you see yourself relative to others, cast your crown tonight. Sala 
you know there are people that are watching this recording and when Tony called me see why when she called me the first message God gave me was the law of beginnings some of you have ideas but you will not act on those ideas and you're expecting God to do something whereas he's waiting on you to do something You've been trying to start, you've never started. You are looking for capital, you are looking for this, you are looking for that, you are waiting for perfect conditions. And you are not going to get things done in perfect conditions. God wants you to show faithfulness and commitment to the idea that is given you, and when you do that, then he moves. That is the way it works. But you are waiting and waiting and waiting, and the window of opportunity is closing. Do something now. What God expects you to do is to do everything that you can do. Then when you come to an end of yourself, then it begins at the beginning of himself. That is a message I was told to give from home. But let's go to law number three, the concept of love worship. You see, the God you know is the God you worship. And there are two dimensions of God in this place tonight. The first is that God is sovereign authority. The second is that God is a compassionate God. In his capacity as sovereign authority, he is defined entirely by power. And you can cross-reference Egypt. He decapitated this monarchy. He annihilated the economy. The economy. He destroyed the army. And then just for sure, just for sure, he obtained the laws of nature and parted the Red Sea, telling you that it doesn't matter what it is. There's nothing that is impossible for God because the one who made the law is the one who obtains the law. It doesn't matter what people have told you. They've told you you can never have a child. You won't be sealed. This is happening. That is happening. Don't listen to that because nothing shall be impossible with God. His power is available here tonight. As a God of compassion, he is ever merciful. He forgives us. You've got to forgive yourself and move on. He is forgiving you. It does not exist. But you are holding on to it in your memory because you think that God is man. And God is not man. Our sins are taken care of. The Lord is our shepherd. We will not lack. In famine, we shall be fed. When everybody is confessing lack and want, confess the word of God. Now you don't know how it works, it's not your business how it works, but you're soon going to learn that the Word of God is programming language. And that when He speaks, things begin to get done. Things begin to get programmed. And that's the way this thing works. So worship God, the God that you know tonight. The God of power, the God of compassion. I don't care what it is, hold on to that.
the all-powerful God who call me his friend who said that he's my brother oh, I'm the sovereign one the Alpha, the Omega the last word, the first word he's God who is there like a God who is there like a God who is there like a God who is like a God who is like a God Give man a little power, see what they do. But the sovereign God is merciful. Give man a few weapons, see what you will do. Hey, our God is merciful, oh. Give man authority and see what he does. Let the sovereign one is merciful and kind. Oh, Baba, me or me. The devil son, the devil son, the other my lover. Oh my God, oh my Father, oh, I need a man of sovereign God is merciful. Do you not understand what this means? He chose to be merciful. If he were not merciful, hey, 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 hey. there's nothing I can do. The devil can't take it off. 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 share some things with you about this God. You see, when we gather this way, people think that we're gathered in a religious worship. And God is not into religion. This is a political gathering. And when there's a political gathering, God comes in all his fullness. And there are three powers that are available tonight. It's up to you. The first power is his inherent power. That's the power that raised up Jesus from the dead. That's a sovereign power. It's in him. That's what the Bible calls iskos, which is a muscular power. Because he's God, he must have power. Now let me tell you about this power that raised up Jesus from the dead. What the Bible says is that if the spirit the rest of Jesus from the dead dwells inside of you. It will quicken your mortal body. Uh, I was in my youth call year, and I woke up one day, and half of my face was paralyzed. And I could not talk. I just qualified as a lawyer. I could not talk. I could not smile. My mouth began to make Pythagoras theorem. And I went to the hospital. And they said to me that I was suffering from Bell's palsy. And that the nerve that is supplying the left side of my face is dead. And so I came down from Bauchi to Lagos. And according to the doctors, nobody knows the cause, nobody knows the cure. And so the only option to me, left to me, was to believe God. And this passage that I'm quoting to you, was a passage that I stood upon that if the spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in me, then he can raise a nerve. First month, nothing happened. Second month, nothing happened. Third month, nothing happened. Fourth month, nothing happened. Fifth month, nothing happened. Sixth month, I started feeling some vibrations on my face. And I knew that the nerve that was dead was coming back to life. I don't care what it is today, whether your business is dead, whether your marriage is dead, whether your womb is dead, whether your career is dead, whether your dreams are dead, whatever is dead, 
if the spirit that raised up Jesus Christ from the dead dwells inside of you, it will quicken that which is dead because there is resurrection and you've got to hold on to that and not look at the things that you can see because remember first month for me nothing happened second month for me nothing happened third month for me nothing happened fourth month for me nothing happened fifth month nothing happened then something began to happen on the sixth day the stone was rolled away and my nerve came alive that is why I'm able to talk to you today. The second power that is available to us is the political power of God. People don't know that God goes to work on Monday and that his job is to govern nations. And therefore, when it comes to nations, God exercises political authority. He is the king of kings and the lord of lords. Those are political titles. In fact, every title that Jesus has is a political title. They shall blame in it. He who sits on the right hand of God, your tomb by himself. That is Jesus. And I'm saying that you should worship God tonight from a point of knowledge. That is why we said this is strategic worship. The third power that is available is God's constitutional power. Now you don't know that because there's a way you're not a lawyer. I'm a lawyer. And when I study the Bible, I can see some things that the ordinary man will not see. So when God talks about righteousness, it's referring to the constitutional authority of God, an authority that nobody can contest. Whatever he does is righteous. Whatever he says is righteous. It's not about whether it's right in your eyes or in the eyes of the world. That is why he saved us. It's not because we are anything. It's not because we deserve it. In fact, the Bible says that he had an option to save angels, but he chose to save the descendants of his friend Abraham. And in order to incorporate all the people that are watching tonight and all the people that are in this room tonight, in order to incorporate us into the scheme, it changed the definition of the descendants of Abraham. It changed it from genetics into constitutional. So that now by faith, you are children of Abraham and therefore Abraham's blessings are yours tonight. I want us to exercise these three powers tonight. You are righteous before God. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. It's not based on how you feel. It's not based on what you say. It's not based on what I say to you. It's just a fact. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. Your past is gone. Nothing, absolutely nothing. Nothing, absolutely nothing. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. God will not. Jesus will not. The angels can't. The demons can't. Your parents can't. Nobody can't separate you from the love of Christ. It's not about how you feel. It's a constitutional fact. As long as God is righteous, you are righteous. And God will never stop being righteous. And nobody can contest it. And by the way, righteousness is God's brand. The same way that you have royal mail. You have righteous mail. Everything God does is righteous. So you have to understand that you are the product of a brand. And your constitutional authority lies in that brand. Therefore, stand in your righteousness. Enough of this pushing around. The enemy has pushed you around. The enemy has pushed you and pushed you and pushed you into the world. Fight back. All that guilt is not from God. That sickness is not from God. God is not punishing you for anything. It's not. Because the Bible says that Jesus went about doing good and healing all that are oppressed of the devil. When you hear oppression, they know that what's when you have sickness, that's political oppression. And that's what Satan is exercising. Stand up against a bully. Resist the devil. And it will flee from you. Thank you.
worship him was worship him in spirit and in truth open the eyes of our understanding so that we may worship you in truth so that we may know who you are so that we may know the God that we worship and they got open our eyes let us understand who we are who you are who we are who you are God God Let God arise. Let God arise. Let God arise. So many times when we say God arise, we only see it in two different contexts. It's usually God arise and fight for me. 
But the truth is that you place God in a very, very small compartment of your consciousness and your understanding of who he is on the inside of you and what it means that he dwells on the inside of you really means let God arise. And let everything else bow.
the revelation of God for a doctor's report. You took that report and you put it over your life and you let it decide the context of your life. It determined how far you could go, where you could go, how long you would live. But you must let God arise. Let God arise. Alamotande. Oh, I let darkness fall. Emphasize some of the things that I'm saying. This is the fifth law of worship. And if you can't feel God here tonight, then you are not sensitive. And God is moving through the aisles of this place and doing stuff. You see, God is not a president, God is king. The only reason we are worshiping God is because God is a king, because you do oblation and genuflection before divinity. Therefore, when we come in worship and we oblate ourselves before him, we are telling him you are the king of kings. Because if God were president, he would just knock, he would sing the national anthem, and we just sit down. But as God, the king, we worship him. And the reason that worship is political is because the example that we have in heaven is Revelations 4, where the 20 and 4 elders cast down their crowns. They are not beauty queens. They are political authorities. Therefore, they cast down their crowns. It means that there are levels, and that this level will pass level. 
Therefore, because worship is a political act, we can decree things concerning our nation. There are those that are mongering for war. There are those that are mongering for difficulties. There are those who want confusion. It doesn't matter what your political persuasion is. As long as we're in this place, we control this space. And I want us tonight, we are before the greatest exercise of authority and power the world has ever seen. We are two or three are gathered. There I am. In other words, God comes in his elemental self. The God who approached Sinai and came in an elemental convoy. Lightning was his strobe light. Thunder was his siren. That's the God that you are dealing with. I mean, this is a God that when Moses saw what was happening, he said he quaked like he wanted. He, the Israelites ran away. So I want us as you worship tonight, and I want you to lead this. I want us to worship God and make decrees. We're not here to sing songs to God. We are here to achieve political ends. And we're not going to live here tonight until we have decreed the things that we want in our nation. The denier has to improve. Because as impoverish many people. Inflation is high, it has to come down. All that is not working has to work. The all theft has to stop so that we can earn money. We need to be able to defend the Naira. And all sorts of things must happen because a few of us are gathered here tonight. I don't want you to think that you are doing religious stuff and everything because if, you are, if worship were not political, God will not call you citizens. He will not call you citizens. So we are citizens and we exercise our political authority. Therefore, we're going to decree tonight, this nation, we're not going to run from our nation. War will not scatter us. We will not become a laughing stock in the eyes of the world. We will be proud to carry the green passport. This is what we have. desires to turn the nation around and he has used he has taken a hold of your throat and your breath and your heart and your words carry weight before him so please use it well God of our nation Loves a nation, no. Oh, God of our nation. Judge our nation, no. Your love, how 
wants for everything Your power over everything Oh, your grace changes everything Oh, your word, it changes everything Oh, changes everything God of our nation
today. It is our greatest resource. Our oil is not our greatest resource. Nigeria's greatest resource is that we are a nation loved dearly by God. We are a nation that makes God laugh. We make God happy. We make God proud. Hey, Ayako Toleba, we love your presence. Hey, we love your glory. Hey, we love you, Jesus. Hey, your love comes forever. Toleba Kata, you are the greatest resource. You are our greatest power. You are our king, our king. You are our God, our God. From the north to the south, to the east to the west, Ebobe Kala Bokota, you are God over every man and over every woman. Ebobe Kala Bada, the God who loves us one by one, one by one, one by one. Your love comes for everything. Ebobe Kale Bakate, we approach our King. good the sixth law of worship Colossians 2 3 says that in Jesus dwells all wisdom and all knowledge now we read that and we think that is spiritual knowledge and it's not the Bible says in Jesus dwells all wisdom and all knowledge which means that Jesus understands economics. He understands science. He understands management. He understands mathematics. He understands business management. Every imaginable subject, quantum physics, chemistry, whatever you like, he is the Logos. As the Logos is the creative intelligence of God, is the creative agency in the Godhead. Now, sometimes we worship and we are giving to God. And this time I want you to ask from God, based on the fact that Jesus is the Logos. I want you to ask for insight. You're a professional, you're looking for insight into management principles. Tonight, you can get it. You're a student, you're looking for a way to pass your, your, your studies. Tonight, you can become more intelligent than your teachers. You can have more wisdom than your teachers. You are a consultant. You are looking for ways to solve your client's problems. You can find it tonight. I want you to tell you, I want to tell you something. I'm not telling you things that I don't experience. Sometimes people think I'm very intelligent, whereas all I do is that I'm able to access God and access servers that people don't know exist. What am I trying to say? Tonight, every problem that you have in your business, in your career, in your school, whatever it is, I want you to be open tonight and if you are smart, if you have a notebook by you, you will see the solutions and I'm telling you the truth. 
so that I can encourage you, let me tell you a story. We were doing a management consultancy for a bank, and it was one of the most difficult jobs I'd ever done, and we had to stop on Friday night. On Saturday morning, the Spirit of God woke me at 6 a.m. and said, get on your knees. And I got on my knees and said, grab your Bible and your paper. And I did. And it showed me Paul's missionary journey, the map. And right before my eyes, I saw that map morph into graphs and charts. At the end of the day, there was a solution to the bank's problems. So the next day, I walk up to the board and I start jotting down these graphs and charts and everything. And at first, you know, people look at you and say, is he crazy? What is he doing? And then suddenly, they saw the solution that everybody has been looking for. And I'm telling you, it is available tonight. Here, don't limit God. God is not, he will give you children, he will give you money, he will give you all that stuff, but he can also give you insight. There is no business problem that Jesus can solve. He is the Logos. That is the creative ability of God. There is no school problem that Jesus can solve. There is no professional problem that Jesus can solve. All you need is wisdom. And so we've been giving to God. We've been blessing God. We've blessed our nation. We've decreed. Well, this is the time for you to receive, to plug into God and receive. And it's an act of worship. It's part of worship. Because when you come before King, He will give you something when you are going. There's nothing you bring to God that He will not give back to you in multiples. So I want us to pray tonight and to worship God tonight and be open. Have your notebook ready, have your pencil ready, have your phone ready, whatever it is, just be open. Just be open. I am telling you what I know and what I've experienced. Let's worship God. So I'm going to free every singer on this song. And I want the instrumentalist to play the impartation. In other words, you're going to play a piece that you've never played before. And through that music, God will begin to impart revelation, wisdom, understanding, the opening of the eyes right now. So I want you to play from the spirit. Don't play, don't play on the side as we pray. No, no, you're not playing as background music. I want you to play revelation knowledge. And I declare there is unity upon the musicians that they they begin to play the wisdom of Christ as we begin to tap into the Holy Ghost and receive open eyes and open hearts and revelation and wisdom.
Masha, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. <laughs> oh, yes, Lord. As it is in heaven, <laughs> so it is here on earth. As it is in heaven, so it shall be. is established in justice and righteousness. Mashaya ya ya bakush, ekaya da bakuza, mande berreke di gazaya. Oh ya 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 ya, your kingdom is established. Eya da bakuja in justice and righteousness, as it is in heaven, so it is here on earth. Maya da bakuja, nations are gathering. Makabara da bakuja, in unity, in one accord, to glorify Your name. Makaya da bakaza, ya da bakeze da bakuja. Your kingdom is established in justice and righteousness. Makaya da bara da bakuja, ya na mane ya, ya na ne. us to to dovetail that into the last segment of tonight please keep on playing the music we began by presenting our hearts before God for the Bible says that those that worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth we cast down our crowns before God in oblation of his majesty. And we saw God in his sovereign authority and his compassionate capacity. And we saw God in his fullness of his power, his political power, his inherent power, his constitutional power. Then we began to decree concerning our nation and things have come to pass. And then we were able to receive things from God ourselves, the wisdom and the knowledge that we need for our circumstances. The last thing that we need is an act of faith. And this is where we let go completely and worship God free from. The Bible says that men will praise you when you do well for yourself. And so we prayed a lot tonight and a lot of things that God has granted. I felt the presence of God so powerfully. And when you begin to do well, what now happens is that people begin to worship you. If you're a leader in this place, you have to be careful about worship. Because only God has a capacity to handle worship. All the people that have ever handled worship have malfunctioned. Look at musicians, look at artists, look at politicians, 
Look at Nebuchadnezzar. Look at Solomon. And so what we're going to do in this segment is to thank him for all the things that he's done for us tonight and also to give the worship in advance to him as an act of faith. And we worship God so freely and so wonderfully. And if you can do that, I will have completed my assignment here tonight. Thank you. Free for all. Free for all. Free for all. Every voice, every heart, raise your sound in worship. In free fall, dive into the depths of your worship. I, I, oh. So take yourself back to the seven chapters that have been opened before you today. The generations are represented in this room. And as we end today, The Father in the house has led us through a pathway. So it's a free fall from now on. I, I, I made sure that everybody had their mic on. 
And so I want you to begin to release the sound of your worship. And whatever is holding strong under your feet that is keeping you at the depth that you know at this time, I want you to jump away from it and begin to immerse yourself in the depth of the worship of Jehovah. It is an act of faith right now. He said it's an act of faith right now. He said it's free fall into worship right now. Worship, you begin to seal everything in over your life and over the nation in the mighty name of Jesus. Release your sound. that you shift the depths of the frequency of our worship. All right, thank you, because new doors are open that we've never walked into. In total surrender, oh God, we step in by faith, oh God, into the depths of worship, oh God. We come and we bow. It's like speaking in tongues for the very first time. Enter into the depths of worship that the Father has granted unto you.
increase in unfamiliar territory. try to make it work. Just enter into the fullness of the Holy Ghost. our hearts that worship of God. Don't, don't be afraid to be quiet.
so incredible. Tonight, God is accepting our surrender. I said earlier, what words can we put together for the musicians? How do you sing? Do you know the kind of songs that surround the throne? Tonight, he has accepted our surrender. Our faith, our trust. As the deepest sound of our worship. Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for the revelation of the seven steps and the seven chapters. Father, we thank you because it has led us here. I'm just going to give two minutes. I'm so sorry I'm not so poetic. But two minutes to anyone who hasn't found that place yet. So just let it all go and surrender everything to him. This is worship. And surrender doesn't mean to shrink back always. It also means to step forward in faith. To surrender to his strength. To surrender to his sovereignty. To receive his wisdom. To let go and receive. This is where all of this has led us right now. He didn't lead us to a song. It led us to a beautiful place in our hearts. surrender. Can we just linger here a little bit longer? Just a little bit longer. Get us from. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless you tonight. You alone are God. There's none beside you. There will never be any like you. You are the Almighty. Be glad I am. The I am that I am. There's nobody like you in all the earth. Thank you for the privilege of worship. Thank you for the privilege of life. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege of health and breath. Thank you for those whose birthday is today. Thank you, O oh God, because, Lord, they count their days and they are wise. And thank you, Father, Lord, for your goodness to them. Thank you for their families. Thank you for all the people you blessed tonight. Lord, I'm thoroughly blessed. And I thank you, God, for your presence in our midst this night. Lord, we bless you. We magnify you. We worship you. Father, tonight, 
We pray for all those that are expecting you to give them children, O oh God. I ask in the name of Jesus for the healing of wombs. I ask in the name of Jesus for the healing of seeds. Thank you, Lord, for your dispensation of mercy, for goodness, of everything that you represent, O oh God. Thank you for all those that are in business. Thank you for your blessing upon their business, O oh God. Thank you for your life. Thank you because you breathe your breath upon those businesses and they come alive in the name of Jesus. Father, irrespective of the economy, irrespective of the circumstances, irrespective of the situation, your word is true and your word is constant. Lord, we bless you. We thank you, O oh God, for all those that are looking for direction from you. Lord, that direction may be in many directions, in many faces. Lord, whatever it is, O oh God, that they're asking you, I pray, O oh God, that you provide in the name of Jesus. Thank you, O oh God, for the manifestation of your power in this place tonight. Thank you, Lord, for those that are students that are looking for you and are feeling hopeless concerning their circumstances. I pray in the name of Jesus that those that are looking for scholarship, you provide in the name of Jesus. I pray, O oh God, that, Lord, those that are looking for wisdom, you provide. And those that have problems with their lectures or with their lecturers, I pray, O oh God, that you fight for them and that you resolve the issues in the name of Jesus. Lord, thank you, O oh God, for T.Y. Thank you, Lord, for this home. Thank you, Lord, because I pray the prayer of a father for a daughter for her. I pray in the name of Jesus that your oil will continue to flow. I pray, O oh God, that your blessings will continue to flow. I pray, O oh God, that she will never forget where she's coming from and who she is in you. I thank you, O oh God, for your goodness upon her life. I thank you for her family. I thank you for protection for her in the name of Jesus. I pray, O oh God, that the enemy will not exact upon her and that that which the enemy has tried will fail in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for all the people that are gathered here today. Thank you for the talents that you've given them to sing unto you. Thank you, Lord, because they will ever sing unto you in the name of Jesus. Praise will not cease in their, in their lips, and the Lord and their homes will be blessed. As we go on tonight, I pray in the name of Jesus that your blessing will go with us. Your mercy will go with us. Your kindness will go with us. Your love will go with us. Your power will go with us. Your spirit will go with us. Your protection will go with us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, Lord, for those that have children and those children are giving them problems. I pray in the name of Jesus that you straighten out the issues, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. I pray, O oh God, for all those whose children are on a spectrum tonight. Whatever the spectrum is, O oh God, we dial them back into the spectrum of the Lord Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus. We pray for understanding for them. Thank you for those with attention deficit disorder, O oh God. Thank you, Father, Lord, because you will heal, O oh God, and stretch forth your hands and heal them in the name of Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Lord, I'm trying to receive, O oh God, from you concerning the people that are here. And as your eyes are looking over the rooms, O oh God, I pray, O oh God, that, Lord, you meet this people at the point of their need in the name of Jesus. I pray that they will come to know you and that they will love you. And that, Lord, the things they don't know you will make plain to them that you make their directions clear to God, that you make their paths straight, and that they will walk in the paths of righteousness for your name's sake in the name of Jesus. Lord, thank you for all your blessings tonight. Thank you because we will never forget tonight, O oh God, all the blessings you have bestowed we receive in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. about to be 60 soon and I know that 60 is a very crucial exciting time for sons it's usually preceded by seasons of transition that give way to the greatest adventures that they've ever known every good thing that you desire for yourself Begin to pray for him right now. To thank God for his family, his children, and his crown, his 
I ask you to pray for me still that you're the one person that came to mind when I knew he was coming because I felt like there was such a very important um, line between me. I don't even think it's a personal line, but it's a generational thing. So I just want you to just, in thanksgiving, just speak a blessing of a son. Heavenly Father, the one of whom the whole family on heaven and earth is named. It is both an honor and a blessing to have the opportunity to bless one from whom we have been blessed. Father, for close to two decades, I followed Uncle Leke in different ways. He was the reference point in a lot of discussion about creative strategy. In many ways, he was the competition because he was so blessed in what you are giving to him that any brand, any work that even the company I had gotten to start working for was looking to get in or already had was always potentially going his way. So have you blessed him. The blessing of Abraham that is in Christ Jesus has been upon him, stays upon him, rests upon him, Father, we declare that it abounds more and more in great grace. Heavenly Father, we declare that as he approaches 60, when he gets there, he will look back and say, so my life really just started? Such will the blessings, such will the glory that you will bestow upon him be. And when he discussed the things that he did that made us look in awe from the past, those things will be child's play compared to the things he is doing in the name of Jesus. In every aspect of his life, family, work, ministry, of every kind, ministering to you, ministering to men, your love, your power, your joy that is his strength shall be multiplied up to him in the name of Jesus. The very blessing that you used when you raised him from his sick bed, the blessing you used when you healed him and then gave him as a blessing to companies, to generations, the blessings shall be multiplied. Poured on him afresh, and a new vista, new doors, new spaces, complete with all that he has done, all he has achieved by your power, far more starts to open up in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for you are his great exceedingly great reward in everything you are his exceedingly great reward we give you thanks for the opportunity to be a blessing unto him as he has been to us and we declare oh God that as one family one body the glory the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the grace the great grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, your eternal love, O oh Father, and the unending, constant communication, communion, relationship 
of the Holy Spirit remains His today, tomorrow, when He turns 60, when He turns 70, when He turns 80, when He turns to any age He has decided and talked with you and agreed that He wants to be here to do His work until the day you call Him to say, well done, good and faithful servant, it will be upon Him to the utmost as you perfect all that concerns him day by day and all that he has been to us the blessings shall be multiplied not only in your him but on all his seed on all his family in Jesus name Amen. not just the people that are here but for all the people that will be watching the video in times to come uh, I've reduced this to a few pages here, but I can assure you that I wrote out a 24-page sermon. Wow. Because I wanted to receive specific words. And I'd never seen the six laws of worship, or seven laws of worship. But it was very specific what I'm supposed to come and do here tonight. Very specific. That's why I didn't deviate to the right or to the left. And the word that I was given, I give the word again. Those of you that want to start something and you keep on waiting to start, you got to start from tonight. Whatever you are given, if you need 10 million, and if all you have is 100,000, go and start with 100,000. Because if you don't start, the multiplication will not come. And he gave me that before he even gave me what we are doing tonight. Tony was talking to me. Sorry, I keep on calling her Tony. Okay. Because <laughs> the father calls his daughter Tony. Okay. Uh, she, as she was talking to me, we were just exchanging words. You know, and she felt, oh, this is, you know, but I was very clear about what I was supposed to come and do here tonight. Very, very clear. Uh, and I want to thank you, you know, for accommodating a non-singer like me. <laughs> now, when she said she turned on the mics, I said, oh, God. <laughs> you know, all those recordings that you just hear somebody singing badly in the background. <laughs> I said, God, give them the grace to filter my voice. <laughs> you know, but it's, 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 I, I'm blessed tonight. I mean, you don't see this often. And I bless this home, you know, and, and I bless the contents of the home. I pray for protection on this home. Amen. I pray for greater glory. Amen. I pray, oh God, that when you have lifted to me to where she's supposed to be, where she's going, that she will never forget you. Amen. I pray, oh God, that she will learn to be humble before you and to always give the glory to you and to acknowledge before God and before men and before angels and before demons that it is your doing, oh God, for you are the one who makes. You are the one who makes. As you told Peter, I will make you fishers of men. A fishers of men is available. Therefore, whatever you have decided to make to me, make her in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, as she has sung tonight, that she surrenders all to you. I pray, O oh God, that you take her words in faith and believe her for what she said. And take it that she meant what she said, O oh God, because when you give her, when we give ourselves to you, you're able to make us beyond what we can ever imagine. One who can never think, we won't ever contemplate. Therefore, take her out to hide to God. God, I was a nobody, and you made me somebody. I was nothing, but you made me an inspiration. I had no knowledge, but you gave me wisdom. I've been to the top universities of the world, and I've spoken there, and they wondered at your wisdom. It's not because of anything, it's not because, because I have anything, it's not because of any pedigree. It's just your grace and your mercy. And I'm asking in the name of Jesus, from an emotional perspective, oh God, that the people that are gathered here today, that you will bless them in like manner. Yeah. That it will not be because of anything they have or anything they don't have. Not be because of who they know or who they don't know. The same way that I'm not a member of any club, any member of any executive capacity, any member of any association, but because I give you a test to God that if you lift me up, it will be clear that you are the one who made me. I'm asking in the name of Jesus, emotionally this night, that for the people that are gathered there, that they will remember, oh God, that you made them out of nothing in the name of Jesus, that they will learn to give the glory to you and bow and prostrate before you, before men, that they will not be ashamed of you and ashamed of your word. 
and Lord, where they deviate, where they miss it, I pray in the name of Jesus for the outpouring of your mercy in, in advance, in advance of their transgressions, for they cannot be perfect to God. They cannot be, who can compare himself to you, who can stand before you, if you are to look at sins, who can stand before you. I pray in the name of Jesus, there's somebody here who's looking for a child, there's somebody whose womb has not yielded a child. I pray, O oh God, that you will inseminate her, oh God, by your power. And that, Lord, what has been said to be impossible, you will make possible. Amen. I pray in the name of Jesus for those people that as they are a worshipping community, that they will continue to be a worshipping community. Amen. And their case will not be like that of Lucifer, oh God, who forsook the place that God has put him. Lord, I bless you, and I thank you. I lay my blessings upon this place, oh God. He said, when I come into a place, I should leave my blessings there. And so I leave my blessings here, God. And everybody that is here partakes of that blessing in the name of Jesus. Father, you are the one, the one, the one, the one, the one, the one, the one. They are the one, oh God. You are the one, oh God. You are the only one, the only one. Thank you because you are the God of Mickey on earth. Thank you because you are the God of Tony. Thank you because you are the God of everybody that is seated here today. And they will claim you as their righteousness. They will claim you as their assets. They will claim you as their knowledge. They will claim you as their property. For you will be everything unto them, unto them in the name of Jesus. Lord, I bless them, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. I bless them in the name of the Father. I bless them in the name of the Son. I bless them in the name of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Let your power, your power, and Satan, I take authority over you in the name of Jesus. I put a stop to your works in the name of Jesus. I stop you. I place an injunction upon you in the name of Jesus. I uproot in the name of Jesus every work of yours in the name of Jesus. I uproot every sickness, every fear, every depression in the name of Jesus. I come against the spirit of hopelessness in the name of Jesus. I insert the hope of Almighty God into this place in the name of Jesus. Lord, I bless you. I bless you. I bless you. Yaka basaka baba baba. Sata ba yaka baba baba. Masoto ko yaka baba baba baba. Masaka ba yaka baba baba. Masaka ba yaka baba baba. To you be all the glory. To you be all the honor. To you be all the power. In the name of Jesus, we are praying. Amen, 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 amen. It is so, it is done. You have heard, you have answered, it is done. We receive, oh God. All that is spoken, so it is. It is finished, it is finished, it is done. Amen, 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 amen. It is finished, it is done. Declare it. Amen, amen, amen. Oh, it is finished, it is done. We receive. Amen, amen, amen. It is sealed. It is finished. It is done. Abakate le neko tole magada. We thank you. Amen. 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 It is finished. It is done. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Stay in the spirit. See, tonight was not an ordinary night. Stay in the spirit. Take notes. Ask the spirit of God to give you wisdom. So you can understand the things that have been imparted. You are not the same. Be careful for the thief that tries to steal that which you have been given. The seeds have been sown. Some of them are in seed form. Be careful to guard the seed. Some of you have walked into new identities and new graces, new expressions. Guard. Don't play around. Because it is finished. It is done. 